foodies, we search for that perfect bite, the one that makes us stop, close our eyes, and focus wholly on that moment. But most of those moments never happen for one simple reason. Too much, not enough, or the wrong kind of salt. Salt's in almost everything we cook or bake, and yet when a recipe calls for salt, how many of us ask which one? It's usually, how much does it take? So tonight, we're going to consider the three key principles that are involved in salt selection, mineral content and composition, as well as taste and texture. And those two components determine which salts should be paired with which foods and when salt shouldn't be used. Now, for most of us, when I say salt, you probably think of this. <laughs> it's refined. It's had all of its essential minerals and elements stripped out of it, had iodine added to it. And at 99.5 to 99.8% pure sodium chloride, we could more accurately refer to it as lab grade rather than food grade. <laughs> we feed it to these guys and to these guys, and it's equally harmful for both of them, not just because it's been refined, but because it's had anti-caking agents added to it that have known health problems. So what do we do? Well, we give consideration to the fact, first and foremost, that all salt is sea salt. No matter whether it's refined or not, it comes from the sea. This isn't special. The salt they were using before this was still sea salt. <laughs> the real question is where and how it comes from the sea. Because unrefined sea salts are crafted by evaporating seawater over hours or days in greenhouses and in porcelain-bottomed ponds that have been cut by hand, that have been baked by the sun for decades, and that are attended to by artisans, individuals who craft sea salts that are unique in both mineral content and composition. That is small batch crafting at its finest, wooden hand tools and all. Would you guys like to see the artisan that crafted your kosher salt and table salt? <laughs> the top picture pretty much tells the entire story because salt is a desiccant. It absorbs fumes and moisture content, and I can tell you, diesel smoke sea salt is not tasty. Iodized sea salt also does not occur anywhere in nature, not even here. Now, there's been a lot of hype about Himalayan pink, 84 different minerals and elements, but you know what? One of the finest sea salts in the world has only 10 different minerals and elements, Cell Gris de Garonne. And that salt, because of those minerals, produces crystals and flakes that produce a flavor profile on the palate, as well as a crunchiness that is unparalleled. And those are the things that are really important to us with salt, taste, and texture. Now it's going to be different for each salt. Top growth crystals, they present as hotter, saltier on the palate because they have more potassium and more magnesium in them, whereas bottom growth crystals, well, they're richer, they're more well-rounded minerally, and so they present as smoother and creamier. Can you imagine the crispy crunchiness of that top growth crystal, as well as the mineral saltiness that accentuates and brings forward the fruity sweetness of those tomatoes? Interestingly enough, finishing salts are also equally well suited for both cooking and for seasoning, and so pairing is a serious consideration. Some salts are best for fruits, some for protein, some for soups, some for sauces, and some, some, some actually elevate the simplest of veggies to something on the order of a cereal. Would you pair a sauve blanc with that beautiful meal? I wouldn't, and you shouldn't pair kosher with that or any meal. So what do you do? We recommend starting by pairing a Hawaiian red with the carrots as a root vegetable to accentuate the sweet and the savory components. A top growth fleur de sel with those Brussels sprouts to accentuate the sweet and the creamy nature of that. And a black truffle salt to underpin the pungent and earthy notes of those peppercorns for that beautiful filet au poivre. Now it's going to be difficult because there are more than 130 different types of sea salts crafted around the world. So learning to pair salts, first for taste and then for texture, will take time. But as you do so, you're going to learn that more than just the salty flavor is involved in developing that flavor profile. You're going to have questions. You're going to want recommendations. And so tonight, most of you have met your first sommelier. But you know what? You can be a sommelier too. Learn to pair the right salts with the right foods, and you will never again underestimate the value of a well-salted meal. But more importantly, you will never allow just any old sodium chloride into your kitchen or into any other as acceptable because you now know there's a better choice. We thank you for joining us this evening. We encourage you to keep searching for that perfect bite. And remember, when it comes to salt, 
happiness is just a lick away. <laughs>